After months of preparation, as soon as Shabbat ended on April 15th, my family drove me to the airport and my two-week March of the Living journey began. The Lot Polish Airlines plane was 95% full of Toronto March of the Living participants, be they students, young adults, or adult groups. And of course, there were staff and chaperones and doctors, the spiritual leader, and our beloved survivors, who were the most important participants. They were sitting up in business class as they should. March of the Living Canada operates three main groups for students, the largest being Toronto, with the students spread out on four buses this year. I was with them. Montreal had a large group, and there was also the Coast to Coast group, which is composed of Canadian Jews who do not live in Montreal or Toronto. You know, the rest. The Toronto and Coast to Coast groups stayed at a number of the same hotels, but for the most part were two separate entities. The two buses of Coast to Coast had one survivor with them. Toronto had five amazing survivors with us, including our own Rini Friedman, who's here right now in the back of the room. At different times during the week in Poland, the survivors shared their testimony, their story with us. You could have heard a pin drop when they spoke. Every participant paid attention and really listened. Their screens were away. Since I was not assigned to a specific group of teens, I was privileged to spend a lot of time with the survivors. Friday, the 21st of April, was a gorgeous spring day in Warsaw. The sun was shining, it was warmer than usual, everyone was wearing a hat and sunglasses and sunscreen and carrying their water. And that morning, the Toronto delegation was starting the day at the Warsaw Jewish Cemetery. It's one of the largest Jewish cemeteries in Europe and the world, according to Wikipedia. I can't tell you much more about being there firsthand. I didn't hear much from our guides because I was only there for about 15 minutes. A WhatsApp message reached the staff that were trying to locate me. I was needed as soon as possible. I was called back to the hotel where both Toronto and Coast to Coast were staying. While Toronto was at the cemetery, the Coast to Coast group was finally listening to their survivor, Alex Buckman, formally share his testimony. Alex was treated like a king by these kids. They loved him. They loved him. <sighs> While Alex was giving his testimony in front of the kids and the doctor and the videographer and the chaperones, and the educator, and his own son, Patrick, who was on the march as his liaison, Alex fainted and fell over. Alex Zichronoli Vracha never got up again. Perhaps you saw the obituaries for Alex in the Canadian Jewish News or the Globe and Mail. An Uber was called for me, and when I finally got back to the hotel, I found all of the kids sobbing in the lobby. Understandably, they had been ushered out of a room where they saw it happen. And they were replaced in that room by police and by medics and those sorts of official people, including the chief rabbi of Poland and Dr. Shmuel Rosenman, the chairman of the entire March of the Living Enterprise. They were all getting to the hotel as soon as possible into that room. So I checked in on things with an eye towards halakha. I remember being in the Uber and I was texting Reb Steve because he was in Israel and it was just an hour difference and I wanted to make sure I was doing everything, make sure the windows open, make sure people are saying to Hillem. That's what I thought I was called back for, but no. I was told that I was needed for the teens because coast to coast did not have a spiritual leader traveling with them. 
Yeah. The MSW rabbi combo comes in handy sometimes, I suppose. By this time, the hotel had found a room for the delegation, and I walked in to find most of the kids still crying. Some were holding each other. One was journaling through her tears. Some were texting with their parents. And others, well, they were like the biblical Aaron when he found out that his two sons had died. They were like stone. They were silent. This was not an easy room to enter. And so I stood in the middle and I asked one simple question. I asked, would anyone like to share what they are thinking or feeling right now? One teen embodied Nachshon ben Aminadav, the chieftain of the tribe of Judah, who in Parshat Naso presents his offering to God first. He went first. He was Nachshon. Now, I can't remember verbatim what the teen said, but I remember that he was expressing real anger. And that a few others, they expressed guilt. Others were able to verbalize the trauma that they were feeling because a person that they came to love died in front of their eyes. And most of them had never seen a person die before. <coughs> but then slowly the comments, they changed directions. The kids started to share memories. One young man said that he had cut himself shaving a few mornings before and he kept trying to stop the blood with wet tissues. But Alex suggested to him that he use a dry tissue. And what do you know? The bleeding stopped. Another shared that Alex had told them that he had run marathons and he encouraged the importance of physical exercise. Another said that they were at breakfast that morning before and the butter packet was so cold that the butter would not spread. So Alex taught her to place a coffee cup with a warm beverage in it on top of the butter packet and that way the butter would quickly soften. We can all try that. Another spoke about how Alex cared so much about the indigenous population of Canada, specifically in BC where he lived, because professionally, Alex worked as a housing officer for the Canada Housing and Mortgage Corporation, where he developed homes for indigenous people. And more than one student spoke about the gâteau à la orange recipe that Alex treasured, as it was from a secret cookbook that his Aunt Rebecca miraculously created in the Ravensbrück concentration camp. At times, I found myself tearing with the kids during the hours that I was with these students. The trauma in the room was palpable. And at the same time, I was amazed how one person was able to connect with so many people in such a short amount of time. They created a very robust character sketch of a man they had known for less than a week. Now, you might have heard that the March of the Living did not operate for three years due to the pandemic. And so for three years, people, young people, did not have the opportunity to learn from survivors. Thankfully, this year they did. And there was so much impact. One person, Alex Buckman impacted every single person on the Coast to Coast March of the Living delegation. And he did that because he was a real person in real life who walked with other people, hugged other people, broke bread with other people, and had real conversations with others, panim el panim, face to face. A couple of weeks ago, I read a book called The Future is Analog, How to Create a More Human World by the Toronto author David Sachs. And his thesis is that with all of the shortcuts that technology offers, and we experienced so many of them during COVID, we need to stay focused on what matters, which is real relationships, real conversations, panim el panim, 
face-to-face -face conversations and opportunities. <coughs> Alex, Zichrono Livracha, an 83-year-old man, made human connections with the entire coast-to-coast -coast March of the Living delegation. And as a result, his death is traumatic. The students articulated that not only were they crying because they witnessed another human being die, they were also crying because Alex would no longer be walking the earth to share his wisdom and his story. As we pivot now and we open our Yisker books in just a few moments, in your mind, go back to times when you connected Panim El Panim, face to face with the people that you will recite Yisker for. If you'll be reciting Yisker for just one person, go deep into your memory. How did that person make you feel when you really, really connected? And for those of you who recite Yisker for multiple people, go there too. In your mind, as you see their faces and their images, remember how it felt to connect to them. You know, there's a reason why connect is one of our core values at Betzedek, because it positively impacts our well-being, it makes us smarter, and it builds community. I invite you to keep the memories of the times that you really connected with your loved ones in your forefront as we turn to our booklets to page nine. <laughs> 